Hello Internet, this is Rhythm Man and we're going to talk about Atlas, the brawler. Atlas is the newest Warframe and uh, basically uh, I gave a review earlier about what my first impressions were of him. I've had a little more time of him and I think I'm ready to give a more in-depth review. So this video is going to give you a basic overview of Atlas and we're also going to talk later on about his abilities and what sort of mods affect his abilities in what way. And towards the end, I'm gonna talk about how I mod him and how I use him and show you a little bit of gameplay footage as well. If you wanna just skip over to one of these other sections, uh, I'm gonna have some, uh, basically some links or some links to the times at the bottom in the description below. So, uh, let's go ahead and get started. All right, so let's talk about Atlas in general. He's a strong brawler type Warframe, and he's designed for rash at heart players, kind of like myself, who like to just jump in there and kill everything. No planning, no strategy, just death. And I kind of like that. He's named after the Titan in Greek mythology who held the sky up. And ironically, Medusa's head was used to petrify him to stone, similar to one of his abilities. Now, Atlas is immune to knockdowns, and this is kind of similar to a Greek mythology figure Antaeus, I believe, is how you pronounce it. Anyway, he was invincible as long as his, he touched the ground. And uh, he used that to basically win a lot of wrestling matches. It, that sounds a lot like Atlas's passive ability. Now, the blueprints are awarded by completing the Jordis Precept quest to unlock the Jordis Golem Arcwing assassination so you can farm for the parts. So, if it sounds like a real pain in the butt to farm for, it's because it is a real pain in the butt to farm for. An easy way to get it is to drop 225 platinum, but it's up to you if you really think it's worth spending platinum to get him. His health is 300 and his shields is 300. His armor is an exceptional 450, the second highest in the game, and his power level is 225, which is also pretty good. But he is lacking in his speed. His sprint is actually 0 0.9, which is, which is actually, I didn't know it could actually go less than one, so that's interesting he has three polarity spots already and then his aura polarity spots uh, is perfect for steel charge which is going to be really good for melee damage now right off the bat I have to say this warframe wins with style points and style points matter uh, when you're out there on the battlefield not only do you want to be good but you want to look good and with this guy you don't need any attachments you don't need any capes or armor or anything. He looks good just the way he is. And uh, hey, even if you aren't the most valuable member of the team, you're definitely gonna be looking good. And now the moment you've been waiting for, the piece de resistance, the abilities. Let's talk about Landslide. It does moderate amount of damage and it releases a rock hard punch to the face. Uh, with each successful hit, you use about half the energy as the last hit, down to a minimum of 6.25. That makes it more viable uh, even with Blind Rage, which normally increases energy, but after you keep doing hits, you're gonna retain that added power while still using very little energy. You can also increase the range with mods as well. Adding to the melee counter is also a pretty nice trick that this does too. Now, Tectonics is your second ability, and it erects a wall of stone right in front of you to block attacks. Now if you press the button again, it condenses and rolls that stone into the direction of the target that you clicked on. Now this makes it very useful for trolling other players because you can put it in narrow doors and narrow hallways to block players from going through. But if used well and used wisely, you can actually block enemies instead and prevent them from getting to a defense target. But uh, hey, players are gonna play and trollers are gonna troll. So we'll see how that works out. Petrify is the third ability, and I have to say, this is my favorite. Using Medusa-like powers, you can turn your enemies into stone. And it works further away with range mods. But be careful with using the overextend mod, as less power will mean that it takes longer for them to actually turn into stone. If you want them to turn into stone quickly, add a power mod on there, a power strength mod that is to get them to turn to stone quicker uh, more duration can be added with duration mods to keep them stone longer 
And something I noticed with this is there are some enemies that seem to take off way more effort to, to turn into stone. And even a few enemies that for some reason seem to just don't want to turn to stone. No matter how close you get to them and how much power strength you have, they just won't turn to stone. That's the only thing that's limiting the usefulness of this one. Rumblers. <laughs> well, let's get ready to rumble. This is probably my most fun ability. Um, it summons two golems or two rock warriors to fight along your side. Now, it kind of sounds lackluster, but they do take some of the heat off of you. And they can dish out a little bit of damage as well. Duration mods are going to make them last longer. And power strength mods are going to make them hit harder and have more health. If you want them to run faster, add some range mods. Because reasons, that's why. Anyway, power strength also affects the size of them too. So low power strength equals small rock warriors. And high power strength equals gigantic ginormous like huge they're huge they're big it's actually kind of impressive so if not for the extra health and the power strength just do it because hey everybody loves huge golems right am i right am i the only one i'm not the only one so suppose you're wondering how do i mod this thing well i'm here to help let me show you my build first i use enemy sense and continuity the continuity adds a little more duration to my rock golems, and the enemy sense prevents uh, me from being snuck up on by enemies from behind. I really hate it when that happens. Redirection, vitality, and still armor add survivability to the frame. Because of the high armor value, this is a really good combo, but I like to go overboard with everything I do. So I added flow, quick thinking, and equilibrium to supply an extra emergency reserve of health points. Now, I like to think of health points as health points and just that. When you add armor to it, it's really hard to really understand how much that armor is helping out. So I did a couple of calculations here. And according to what I calculated, with an armor value of 945 based off of the steel armory, you get an HP increase of about 4.166 times. So now, if you apply that to the 740 health that you get with uh, Vitality on this guy, uh, the effective health uh, with the armor is about 3078.4 health points give or take and now that's just the survivability based off of the health points alone now if you take into account the fact that you're using quick thinking with a 240 percent efficiency and a power level of 450 because of the flow you end up having a little bit closer to 1080 health points and that's before you apply armor to it so applying armor to the emergency reserve of health gives you an effective health level of 4499 Point two in energy reserves. That's if you transfer from energy to health. Now add that to your total health that we did at the beginning and you get a grand total of approximately 7,577.68 health points. <sighs> that's a lot. And that's with flow, not with prime flow. If you use prime flow, those numbers skyrocket. So equilibrium is a little bit of a buffer because suppose you run out of energy. Pick up energy and you get health. Pick up health and you get energy. And since our energy is health, basically no matter what you pick up, you get health twice over. So this actually makes the frame really easy to survive. As a matter of fact, it probably makes them one of the hardest to kill warframes in the game. Probably even tougher than Valkyr, who has a really high armor value, but not so great energy and not so great health. So there you have it. But let's say you don't believe me. Uh, why don't you watch this video of me beating up 20 heavy grenades alone with nothing but a glaive. Atlas is a sturdy warframe representing rock and earth, things that are strong and mighty and hard to move. While he is slow and bulky, he's capable of surviving almost anything you throw at him. Abilities are a bit lackluster, but they come in handy in certain situations. If you found this video helpful, give a thumbs up and subscribe for more. I'll see you later and have fun with Atlas. He rocks.